Yep. Yep. Um, and we're going to have a panel after of some other social media pros, so you guys can ask all your questions. Write them down. Be ready. Ask really <coughs> hard questions, OK? Um, we'll, we'll look into stump them if you can. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, please give me a round of applause and welcome to your welcome back to Thank you. Thank you. you already got your legs here. Yep. Thanks. Um, so first, let me just start off. Um, as we go through this presentation, by all means, please ask questions. In fact, I encourage it. Um, I really don't like presenting in front of people and just talking. Um, so please ask. Um, if you have any questions, we can answer it. We also, like Luke said, we will do a, a panel after with some other social media um, experts. So we can ask questions there. Um, if you have any questions, even moving forward after this presentation, find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Wilbur Wong. Feel free to reach out and, and shoot me a message. Um, and also, as another disclaimer, I've been kind of fighting a migraine the past couple of days, so I'm not necessarily the, as prepared as I would like to be, so please bear with me. Um, just be kind. And wait, before I start, I wouldn't be doing social media if I wasn't doing a selfie. And I can't really do a selfie, so I'm going to do a panel. So say, everybody say hi. Uh, hi. Oh, that projector screwed me up. It's OK. <laughs> All right, thanks, everyone. OK, so just a little bit of background on me. Um, I feel I'm kind of fortunate in the sense of my generation. I grew up at a time before the internet was even a thing. I, I rode my bike around the neighborhood. I just had to be home by sundown for dinner. Um, and that was my life growing up. And as the internet kind of grew, I kind of grew with it. Um, I started doing HTML in high school, built my first website. As social media started popping up, you know, it's just one of those things like, okay, it's kind of cool because I like technology, I like computers, so I check it out. I kind of learn what things are, um, what people were doing with it. And so fast forward now, you know, I'm, I'm doing it for a living. I get paid to do, I tell people I get paid to be on Facebook for, for a job, right? Um, some of my current nonprofit clients include Hospice Hawaii, um, Catholic Charities Hawaii, Waikiki Aquarium. Um, the, our agency does a number of other nonprofits, both as clients, but also as board service and things like that. And I admit, it is challenging doing, doing work for nonprofits, but what I really love about it is I get to learn all the great work that the nonprofits are doing, and then I get to tell that story to the world. I get to share all the great things that you guys are doing in the world, and, and um, yeah, so that's fun for me. So it, it, it's different. Um, just a little bit about Becker Communications. So, we were founded 29 years ago by Ruth Ann Becker here in Honolulu as a public relations agency. Since then, we've grown to become a full service communication agency. So in addition to PR, we're doing um, issues and crisis management. We're doing advertising, marketing, branding, um, and then of course, digital communication. So my team, we handle um, web design, web, web maintenance, email marketing, online advertising, and of course, social media. I'm fortunate to work with a great team. And actually, like I said, I was kind of fighting something um, this presentation wouldn't even be possible if it wasn't for my digital team. They really helped me put together the presentation. Jairus really helped put this deck together for me um, because I just, I, I was out for the count the past couple of days. So um, one thing to note, our approach to communications, while we do offer a lot of different channels, we always think integration. So we don't just do one channel alone and, and, and think that's, that's the end all be all. Everything that we do, we, we, we start with our client, we start with the brand, we start with the message that they're trying to tell, and then we figure out what channels would make the most sense to tell that message. And then after that, it's all about integration. It's um, layering, it's, it's integrating your messaging, and it's a timing, so that your audience, whoever they may be, is hearing the same messages from multiple different sources and multiple different times to get the most bang for your buck, essentially. So while we, we are talking social media here, it's important to note that you can't just do any one channel that even in the digital world, you know, your, your, your social media should be integrated with your website and your email so that, again, at least from a digital front, they're seeing the same message across different platforms because they're never going to see, they're never, potentially they won't see all different channels, so at least if you're doing everything that you could at least get your message out there at one point in time. So back to social media. One question that normally comes up is, well, what should we be posting on social media? But first, we kind of need to take a step back and you need to think about what makes the most sense for your organization. What channels should you be posting on? I think it's fair to say that a lot of people aren't asking if we should be on social media. It's, it's, it's what right now. People want to tag. They want to mention. They want to check in. So why don't we let them, right? 
So let's give them the opportunities to do all of that. So what social media channel should you be using? Well, it depends on who you're trying to reach. Who is your audience? Um, are you trying to reach working professionals? Are you trying to reach um, maybe uh, retirees with a little bit more disposable income? Or maybe you're looking for volunteers. Teenagers are looking for volunteer work. This is in the United States. So this is uh, information from 2014, last year, of, um, of who's using social media for adults, so 18 to 18 on. And so just a little breakdown. The, the deck will be passed around, so don't feel like you need to write everything down. But um, Facebook alone has pretty much, they're the biggest network, right? So they have the most amount of users. 71% of people on the internet that are adults have a Facebook account. And so that's roughly 85% of the entire population in the US. So more than half of the population in the US adults have a Facebook account. Again, reaching your audience, right? Um, if you're trying to target maybe working professionals or um, uh, uh, college kids, Twitter is a good demographic. Um, between the ages of 18 to 29, 37% of them use Twitter or have a Twitter account. And Instagram, if you want a little bit younger, um, um, the majority of them are between the ages of 18 to 29. So again, picking the right channel based on who you're trying to talk to. Um, if teens is your audience, then you might want to think of uh, platforms like Snapchat, Vine, and again, Instagram. Snapchat is definitely a lot younger. 45% of adult users on Snapchat were between the ages of 18 to 24. And if you actually, if we had the data, teens is a little harder to get. Um, teenagers actually use this a lot more than even adults. So you, even like for 18 to 24 year olds, that's actually a little high, but it would be actually a lot more would be in the teenage uh, demographic. Vine, 28%, again, with the same demographic, 18 to 24. And then Instagram, so a recent survey said that of teenagers, 32% of them said that Instagram was the number one most valuable network for them compared to just 14% saying the same thing for Facebook. So again, showing the difference between if you're looking for maybe a more mature audience, Facebook definitely is the way to go. But if you want to target teenagers or people younger, then consider some of these other platforms. Um, so after you selected your channels, what should you be saying? Start with a goal. What are you trying to achieve? If you don't have a goal, then how do you know what you're doing is even worth your time, right? How do you know that what you're doing is actually being effective? Start with a goal. Um, you don't want to be doing social media for the sake of just doing social media. If you have a purpose and your audience understands that purpose, you get your audience to know that purpose, then you've done your job for that day. And I say that day because social media is a 24-7 thing. So tomorrow is going to be a new audience with a new message, and then you do the same thing all over again. So you really want to keep at it, get your messages out there to as many people as possible. If I was to ask each of you, tell me something about your organization. Tell me in a sentence or two, what makes you special? What sets you apart from other people? I bet you everyone will be able to tell me a lot of things about your organization, right? Well, do it in social media. Sell yourself, separate yourself from the clutter. What makes you special and why should I care about you? If you sell it in your post, give me a reason to care and then I will. You really have to separate yourself, tell them why they should care. So how do you tell your story? Something to think about, going back to the numbers we said earlier, almost everybody has a Facebook page. So you're, co you're competing not against other nonprofits and businesses, you're also competing against, you're competing with moms, you're competing with dads, grandmas, grandmas, aunties, uncles, and, and even pets for that matter, right? Everybody has a Facebook account, so you need to stand out. So how do you stand out? Be visual. Picture says a thousand words, right? Nothing beats a good visual on the internet, especially on social media. And studies have even shown that what colors you put into your images makes a difference in terms of how many likes you're going to get. So side note, it's blue because that's America's favorite color. But green, my favorite color, is number two. So generally pictures, and again, it depends on the platform, but generally studies have shown pictures with blue or green, nice appealing colors versus things that maybe like a burgundy may not be as appealing would get you a lot more likes. Do you ever wonder, so think about this. Do you ever wonder Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of those icons are blue. There's a reason why they're blue, right? Um, so keep that in mind. So, and if a photo tells a thousand, if a photo says a thousand words, tells a thousand words, says, I don't know. Um, what does a video do? Videos do extremely well on Facebook. Partly, yes, it's, it's th they're putting value and emphasis on it, but it's called viral video and not viral photos for a reason, right? There's a reason for that. A video allows you to, convey emotions that you really can't achieve in any other way. 
um, you can tell a story, you can really convey, I think Bernard kind of touched on it as well, right? Um, so I'm not saying you should only do videos, but definitely consider it whenever it's possible. You can really sell yourself through a video. And if not, quality photos, quality graphics work as well. People don't like to read, and that's no surprise, I think, to anyone here. Um, especially in social media where everything is just swipe, swipe, swipe. So you want something that's easy to understand at a glance. You can look at it and really get your message right off the bat. You want something that'll grab your viewer's attention and get them to pause. Once they pause, then you can sell your message. Right? You can, then you can tell the message, but you need them to stop. Stop scrolling, look at you, hey, what is this about? And then take the time to actually understand it. So content, 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 right? Everything is about content on social media. It won't always happen. But what you should be aspiring to do is that every single thing that you post on the internet that you want it to be shared. Social media posts don't want to be just be put out there and forgotten. There's no point if you're just putting it out there for the sake of putting it out there. It wants to be liked, it wants to get comments, and it wants to be shared. So give it the attention that it needs to, to have it do its job. Keep it short. Um, again, nobody wants to read an essay. Most of the time, there's some exceptions to that rule, but most of the time, people just want to get, get to the point as soon as possible. Um, include a visual to grab your, your viewer's attention, then back it up with a quality caption. Good writing helps. You want something, again, that easy to understand in as few words as possible. Other things you might want to consider, be funny. Humor works great on the internet. Um, teach them something that they didn't know before um, or something that's of value for them. 